Good morning. I'm Christy McDonald with Detroit Public Television. Thanks so much for joining me as we wrap up the last day of the Mackinac Policy Conference. It's been a wonderful week here in the fall up north. Back to talking about business, talking about education, and talking about moving the state of Michigan forward. Joining me now to wrap up the conference is Sandy Brewer. He's the CEO of the Detroit Regional Chamber. Good morning, Sandy. It's good to see you. It's great to be with you, Christy. And Wright Lasseter III, he is the CEO of the Henry Ford Health System, mm -hmm. but is the conference chair this week. It's been quite a week, right? It has been a great week, Christy. It's wonderful to be with you this morning. All right. So when we when we take a step back, Sandy, and we look at everything that went into putting this conference on and getting everyone in this in this space for the first time, we keep saying it in 28 months, when you look at what you've been able to really accomplish this week, what are some of your thoughts? Well, the challenge was twofold, right? You know, the first fold was the challenge that we always have. Can we put together a program that attracts Michigan's top leaders, that you can have substantive conversations, that we get kind of the results that we're looking for? That is a challenge we face every year, except for last year when, well, we just didn't do this. The second fold was, could we do this conference in a different way that ensured to, to the extent possible people's safety and comfort right. being up here. And so we had to do a lot of things very differently. So I'm really pleased, I'm so proud of the team, uh, you know, the Detroit Regional Chamber team, our partnership with the Henry Ford Health System, our friends here at the Grand Hotel, that both of those folds of the challenges, uh, you know, check the box, we did really well, I'm, I'm so proud. Yeah, and right, and really the, the safety of everything and, and everyone's comfort, and it really seemed to be a different energy here of people emerging back into the, into the space where we can exchange ideas and, and feel good about seeing each other, and that's, that's a muscle we really haven't exercised in, in quite a while. Absolutely. Uh, you know, this week felt like coming out of a cocoon, mm -hmm. and I think people have been waiting for that. Um, business leaders said to me that it was so exciting to be with one another. And I would say that, you know, within Henry Ford Health System, one of the things we've been talking a lot about is it's time for us to help our organization and our community live through COVID, live with COVID, and go beyond COVID. And so this conference was a bit of an embodiment of that. It was how can you begin to get back to a sense of normalcy with colleagues around the state to think about how do we push the state forward? How do we support that effort? How do we support the governor, the mayor, business community, the civic community? And so it, it was really a fantastic uh, time. You know, it was one of the things I kept hearing over and over again when I was speaking with people here at the desk. It's, it was like, I'm so glad I'm no longer in this tiny echo chamber of the world I've been operating in for the last 18 months. I'm hearing what other people are doing. I'm hearing different ideas and, and sparking that kind of creativity because we do have a lot of things to tackle. We have each year, here in Michigan when we come up to Mackinac Island in the spring, but coming out of COVID and a new set of challenges, Sandy, but now having an infusion of billions of dollars um, mm -hmm. to be able to make some generational change here in the state of Michigan is really, I'm sure, what you've been talking with people about all week. Yeah, and that's the beauty of the conference because, you know, we do have uh, it's kind of, we've had a seismic change in our society, in our economy, in our society over the last 18, 19 months since COVID, mm -hmm. right? COVID has changed our business landscape and our economy. The federal government's response obviously has been, has been you know, substantially different than what we ever would have expected with right. billions of dollars flowing into the state of Michigan. So having these conversations, again, you know, with a diverse group of leaders, public, private, east, west, you know, uh, throughout the state, you know, we're not going to be able to get to answers and solutions about how we move past COVID and how we use these incredible resources that are coming to us in a smart way unless we're actually talking to each other as opposed to talking at each other via uh, Twitter. Exactly. And right, can you give us a sense of some of the conversations that you've had that, that stuck out on your mind this week and, and things that you want to take forward when we get home? Well, there's a lot of conversation um, with me about our vaccine requirement for our team members mm -hmm. and how to pull that off um, and what are the issues that we felt we faced there. Um, and so, so I had a lot of conversation around that because of what I do and, and, and what our organization has taken a stance on. And then we had a lot of conversation around um, return to the workplace and how to do that smartly and safely and what lessons did we, can we learn from this conference, this convening um, for business leaders. Then we began, frankly, sharing conversations around, um, so what's been good during the COVID crisis? Let's sort of talk about the things that your organization has been able to accomplish, things that maybe you haven't talked so much about because all of the focus has been on COVID-19. It has been on the negative. Right, Absolutely. and so let's sort of talk about um, what your team members and, and staff were able to accomplish during this time. 
Um, how have you looked at productivity differently? How have you looked at use of space differently? What are you thinking about with real estate assets as you go forward? Um, what do you think about your, your economic engine and has it changed substantially? And if so, you know, what, what will that look like? How can the chamber support those efforts going forward? And so it's been a lot of rich conversation along with, you know, frankly, a lot of camaraderie. You know, a lot of folks who were in, in this conference literally had not seen each other in some time. And so this was a time also to renew friendships and to um, sort of establish and acknowledge that we're still here, mm -hmm. we're still strong, um, and we're going to do the things necessary to continue to move our state forward and our communities forward. What about you, Sandy? What are some of the conversations that you had that really kind of, kind of stuck out that you'll take with you going off the island now? Just the, uh, the collective effort that it's going to take business and government to really address the, the challenges that COVID uh, exposed, not that they didn't exist before. So first of all, education. You know, we saw throughout COVID, uh, and it laid bare the racial disparities, the disparities between kind of the haves and the have-nots uh, in terms of education. You know, obviously when we moved to uh, a remote education environment, I mean, that was incredibly detrimental uh, to many of our more challenged students without the resources. Uh, and they are now behind in their education, and we were already behind on education. So that's a hugely important, uh, important issue. I want to echo what, what Wright said about, you know, how do we get back to the office understanding that this is really more an endemic situation, that COVID is just not going to go away one day that you know, we're gonna be dealing with some form of COVID for you know, a year or two, or perhaps even more mm -hmm. to some degree. So we can't hide in our basements forever, right? So what is the path forward for government and business to ensure that we are moving forward safely, still protecting, protecting community health, but still getting on with our lives? Yeah, you said it and also Wright said it as well. When you look at the future of work and maybe some of the streamlined processes that came out of COVID Absolutely. that maybe wouldn't have happened or would have taken five years to implement, but all of a sudden had to happen. And it's, it's, it could be a different world, you know, and just in terms of going forward, it's like, you know what? Maybe it isn't five days a week. Maybe it is t two days at home. And how do we make that and capture that productivity? And how do we make that work for us as much as possible, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. All right. Well, let's go ahead and take a look at the to-do list. You come out at the end of the conference and say, this is what we're going to aim to do. Mm -hmm. So the next time we meet, we can kind of hold ourselves accountable. So we have a lot of great conversations, but it's like, all right, let's check off the list. And sometimes it's the most efficient way that we can all get things done is remind ourselves of what we have going on. So uh, Sandy, I'm going to start with you. Go ahead and, and give us an idea of what we've got on the list. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll rattle off the first couple and then, then I'll let right, uh, rattle off the next two. Uh, but I will say this, you know, so this, we're, so a little different list this year because uh, usually we have a year to work on this as the Detroit Regional Chamber. Our next Clock, conference, ticking our right next now. conference <laughs> is, is, is in May of, of, of 2022. That'll be chaired by Arne Tellum from mm -hmm. uh, the Detroit Pistons. So, you know, we, we kept our list of things. Okay, what can we accomplish really in the next six months? So the first one is that you know, listen, we've got a great convening platform to bring, you know, the business community, the philanthropic community, the civic and nonprofit and government communities together to accelerate data-based, and that's really critical, data-based collective action to better close our racial and social equity gra gaps uh, in the region, and if you look at, you know, Professor Chetty and the D uh, and, the, and our Chamber Board Equity Panel, uh, those were the themes around around the, around those sessions. A second one is that, you know, and this is very consistent with Wright just said a, a minute ago, is that you know we can do uh, we can play a great role in helping employers deploy strategies to reduce the impact of COVID. Right, mm -hmm. you know, if if we're moving into an endemic and we have to deal with you know, de deal with COVID on an ongoing basis, right? How do we help employers understand that so they can get back to more of a sense of normalcy while still protecting public health? Okay, absolutely, right. Yeah. And I would just here. continue by saying, as it relates to COVID, we have to sort of uh, we think we can help businesses understand that COVID has changed both work life and the workplace. And so what are the ways of adaptation that can be useful for moving business forward? And we believe the chamber can have a significant role um, in that. And we also want to ensure, you know, this year was a little bit different given some of the challenges with budget and legislative uh, calendar. We want to ensure the 2022 uh, 
Mackinac Policy Conference has a good slate of bipartisan elected officials here. Mm -hmm. We always believe that you know bipartisan works and that having both sides of the aisle to talk about policy matters is important. And so we, we look forward to having a robust representation of bipartisan elected leaders next next year. Let me ask um, just real quick about we, we have this continuous conversation about civility and the drumbeat mm -hmm. of let's you know or the governor even says she always says bring the temperature down. Have either of you seen that? Felt that? I mean, we we're, when we're in front of each other, it's much it's much easier. But when mm -hmm. we are on social media and and can fly some barbs here and there, it's it's much different. Talk to me a little bit about what you're sensing in terms of civility. Well, the great thing about this conference is, is that if you are a, a advocate of this conference and you choose to come here, you come here with civility in mm -hmm. mind because civility is alive and well at the Mackinac Policy Conference. And you know, you're not coming here if you're not willing to buy into that. And I think what's important about what Wright said about make, making sure that 2022 and beyond, we're back to the bipartisan attendees, right? Because mm -hmm. we did have many Republicans this year not attend. We had Republican attendants, uh, mm -hmm. elected officials, but, you know, frankly, a, a smaller crew than we normally have. And and we want to go back to having, you know, the, a real bipartisan group because everyone, when they walk in the door here, you know, everyone's got their civility hat on and conversations are so much more productive when that happens. Yeah, you can get more things done. Absolutely. All Absolutely. right, go ahead. What else are we looking at here? Yeah, well, the, oh, I'm, I'm sorry. sorry. No, no, I'm sorry. Just say that the yeah. last thing yeah. that we hope to accomplish is, uh, you know, the Chamber has a great education data asset um, through its State of Education report. Mm -hmm. And so we're hoping that we can encompass that type, the type of research that's highlighted in that report. Um, and use that uh, along with data that we heard from uh, Professor Ch Chetty from Harvard um, to help us think about how do we focus on upward mobility in this state and how do we think about the mobility gaps that he shared in communities like Detroit and, and states like Michigan. Um, really critically important that if we want to be a top 10 state, uh, we've got to focus on mobility, uh, particularly for um, communities that maybe have been his historically disenfranchised. And so that's an important effort for us as well. No, and be able, I mean, I, I like how in each of these things, it's, it's really focusing on the, the data. Yep. It's driven. It's like, here are the numbers. Mm -hmm. And then when you talk about getting more of the policymakers up here who are going to make, be making the decisions right. about the spending and what things can be done, it's really a critical piece. Andy. It's a common set of facts, right? Mm -hmm. Over the last, what, 10 years or maybe more, we've been moving away from having discussions based on a shared set of facts. And so that's why, you know, you see this real data theme through this to-do list. It's like going, let's put the data out there, you know, quantifiable data mm -hmm. so everyone has this, we're starting from the same basis as we talk about solutions. We may differ in how we want to solve something, right? Mm -hmm. But let's at least understand the, the challenge from a common basis. Yeah, we start at that same place. Well, this has been quite a week, and I guess as you both sit here and say, all right, right, I'm going to ask you, because uh, being a chair of this conference is a, is a really, um, it's a labor-intensive um, endeavor, but it's also really impactful as well. How do you feel, I guess, as you, uh, as you head off the island? This was a very rewarding experience, um, and it was uh, a pleasure and a privilege mm -hmm. to be the chair uh, coming back from a 28-month hiatus. And so I feel extremely satisfied that we accomplished our goals. Um, the partnership between the chamber, Henry Ford Health System, my uh, team members of my company, the team members in Sandy's company, was, was sort of a great orchestra that played an amazing piece of music. Um, <clears throat> as I heard from our, uh, from our attendees, um, some said this was the best they'd ever attended, and I said, well, now, is that because the bar was lower because you can't remember, you know, 28 <laughs> months ago, or was it really the best? And, and uh, so we're excited that we did some new things. We took some new approaches uh, uh, this year that, um, that, who knows, may become a standard going forward. And so I feel very honored, uh, very privileged, and very proud of our, our work this, this week. And I am prepared to take a deep breath. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, Sandy? You know, a lot of people told me that they were able to have some deeper conversations yeah. this mm -hmm. time around because it did feel so good to be with people and mm -hmm. and just be able to take that breath. Right. Well, I'll say a handful of things. One, number uh, number one, uh, under the category of better to, the, to be lucky than good, having Wright Lassiter, you know, uh, you know, a CEO of one of the premier health systems in the country yes. as your chair when you're trying to conduct something like this in a global pandemic, does you don't get any luckier than that. Secondly, you know, uh, uh, the, the way I describe this year's conference compared to others is that it's the same music, 
just done by a different artist. So if the Mackinac Policy Conference is normally a rock and roll tune, we use those same words, but we gave it to a folk artist. Everything just kind of slowed down oh, just a, little a bit. a little bit. <laughs> just yeah, okay, a little okay. bit, right. But it allowed for that, you know, yes. you know, you know, a little bit so a softer pace and, and, uh, uh, and, and deeper conversations. And finally, what I would say is that, you know, we believe we have, frankly, set the standard in terms of how to do a big event in the reality of what our public health situation is. Because the number of people came up to me and says, you know, I wouldn't be here if it weren't for the vaccination requirement. I, you know, uh, I, I, I caught myself numerous times thinking, oh my goodness, if I didn't know that the people around me were vaccinated, you know, I'd be, I'd be a little bit panicked. But I was so comfortable the entire time because of the protocols that we took. Well, congratulations to both of you putting on this conference. It's good to be here with everyone. And um, we, yes, the clock is starting to run. We will yes. we'll go ahead and look towards May. Arn Tellum will be the, uh, the conference chair, and we'll be checking in with you, Sandy, as, uh, as things go on. And right, we'll be checking in with you Thank because you. you have a lot going on at Henry Ford as we continue through COVID. So. And just quickly, if I could, yes. thanks to you, thanks to your DPTV team for the long-term partnership and thanks for anchoring at the desk here we just love it so you know what so it's my this. favorite part of the year this is the 10 years running of yeah. our partnership yeah. here um, mm -hmm. to be able to bring this conference and that's what i think is so important bring this conference to people who are not here mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. they can have part of the sessions they can see some of the things that everyone is talking about and it's mm -hmm. access to all because if we're going to solve a lot of the major problems or the issues that we have in the state right now we're going to need input from so many people so we are proud to do it so it's good to see both Great. of you Thank have a you. safe drive down and that is going to do it for our coverage of the Mackinac Policy Conference. You can see all of the sessions and the interviews that we have done all week here at our website at OneDetroitPBS.org. My thanks to the Detroit Public Television crew, all of you who you can see over here but are in a truck right now on Mackinac Island producing all of this content. For all of us at Detroit Public Television, I'm Christy McDonald. Take care and we'll see you in May.